Disclaimer, these videos show some tips to help you learn a true hike of the AT. The ideas presented are not the only way, merely one hiker's experience. Remember, hike your own hike. Well, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Tips from the Trail. The trail. <laughs> Today, I'm gonna go for a walk in my backyard. There's my house. And I wanna talk to you guys a little bit about five training tips I wish that I would have known and I would have done before I through hiked the Appalachian Trail. So, let's get right into it. Whoopsie. So I got the idea for this video because I've really changed my training as I've started to do these longer hikes. I just finished the, the 45 mile four state challenge with Bigfoot. And the other day I just signed myself up for the A100, which is a hundred mile hiking challenge on the North Country Trail. It spans the entire Allegheny National Forest on the North Country Trail, all 100 miles. And the only rule is you have to do it in under 50 hours. Basically, back to back 50 mile days. If you're interested in following along with me on that challenge, I won't be posting YouTube videos, but I will be covering it. Uh, there'll be some links in the description if you guys want to follow along. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get to it. Tip number one. Don't worry so much about mileage and getting in a lot of miles when training for the Appalachian Trail. When training for the trail, Sharon and I were hiking five to 10 road miles a day and then running a mile to three miles on a treadmill. And now looking back, I would trade that in for an hour on a stair stepper. You're gonna get your trail legs when you get out and hike on the AT. But the one thing that I feel like was the hardest for me to get was to get rid of that burn in your thighs when you started climbing up mountains. If you don't have access to a stair stepper, you know, if you're in a building, walk up and down the flights of stairs for an hour. Or even if you just have a small set of stairs in your house, go up and down them. You'll thank me for that. Tip number two, spend a lot of time on your feet. And this can be as easy as walking to the store instead of driving to the store, or maybe just watching television instead of sitting on the couch, actually stand on your feet. One of the hardest things to get used to in through hiking is the amount of time you spend on your feet. That's a big shock to your body, going from spending the majority of your time potentially sitting down to spending eight, 10, 12 hours a day on your feet. If you have a desk job, see if there isn't a way for you to get a standing desk so you can spend those hours a day. Yeah, you have to be at your computer, but at least you're on your feet. And like I said before, the trail itself will give you your trail legs, but if you can toughen up your feet by spending hours standing on your feet, you're gonna be a step ahead. <laughs> step a ahead of funny. And tip number three, and this is one that is pretty common, and that is be one with your pack. Take the time to truly get used to your pack and not just train with it, but wear it on an everyday basis. Wear it around the house, wear it to the store. Who cares what people think or what people say? Look at that weirdo wearing a hiking pack into the grocery store. It doesn't matter. I wish I would have done this more. I think one of my major discomforts at the beginning was, yeah, our pack was a little heavier than it needed to be, but you will get used to it, but that discomfort at the beginning of the weight on your shoulders and the tightness in the muscles on your shoulders, there's enough discomfort on this trail that if you can get used to your pack before you start, boom, another step ahead of the game. Tip number four, design a stretching routine. This is something I so badly wish that I did before I started. Don't think that you're gonna get out on the trail and develop something like this. Develop it now while you're at home. Stretching is such a crucial tool that you can take with you on the trail. A lot of injuries can be avoided by letting your muscles stay loose and stay stretched out. And if you don't have this routine developed beforehand, you're a lot less likely to do it on the trail. There's so many distractions. And not only that, after a long day of hiking, you're so tired that you need something 
that is thoughtless, brainless, something that you have drilled and trained at home before you get out there because you're not gonna have the mental power to be like, all right, now what am I gonna do? What am I gonna stretch? If you develop that stretching routine before you leave, you'll be able to do it at those real tired moments at the end of the day. No trail. <clears throat> all right, tip number five. And I wanna throw up a huge, I mean, absolutely humongous disclaimer to this. You have to really take it easy when it comes to adding this into your training regimen. And that is barefoot training. I have begun to incorporate some barefoot training into, uh, into my regimen and I think it, oh, it helps so much. But like I said, disclaimer, you have to very slowly work in any kind of barefoot training because you can get injured very, very, very easy. So the benefits of this are huge. Uh, one of the things that a lot of people complain about on the AT is the downhill and the impact of stepping down. And it's a lot of times caused by landing on your heel and heel striking. When you land on your heel and your leg is straight, it sends this shock up your body, through your hips, into your back, and can be leads to a lot of discomfort. Doing some barefooted training or just walking on the balls of the front of your feet uh, encourages you to step lightly, to step with a bent leg, to absorb impact. Even if you can absorb just a little bit more of that impact off of your knees by having that bent leg, you're talking thousands and hundred thousands to millions of steps. Just a small change can have a great effect for you on your whole through hike. Because I want to put such a disclaimer on this, I'd like to go a little bit more into how I would suggest incorporating this in because like I said, you can injure yourself very easily. One way to start off nice and slow would just be to add it to your daily routine. Say when you walk from the kitchen to the living room, focus on walking on the balls of your feet and not letting your heels touch the ground. Something that small will have an effect over time. After doing that for a little bit of time, you can incorporate maybe some jump roping with, with bare feet. Slowly and steadily incorporating more and more, maybe only uh, you know, two or three minutes, five minutes at a time, a couple times a week, bumping it up to maybe uh, 10 minutes once a week. But like I said, very slow. And then you can work your way up to I me mean, where I am right now. I ran a half a mile barefooted and I'm doing that once a week. Very little, little bits in my approaching using my bare feet more. By strengthening your feet, another thing that you're going to gain is you're going to gain uh, strength in all of these little muscles in your feet and up in your legs. It's gonna help you with uh, the potentials in the plantar fasciitis and uh, shin splints and rolling your ankles. You're gonna strengthen your ankles. It is just such a good tool to use. Also, if you're looking to make that switch from boots to a more minimalist shoe like a trail runner, strengthening your feet is really going to help. Those minimalist shoes do not have the, the padding and the cushion that a big pair of boots do. So taking the time to strengthen your feet up is gonna allow them to be more comfortable. Like I said, start off nice and easy, keep them stretched, and the benefits that you can gain from this are huge. This is stinking gorgeous. All right there, guys. There's my quick five tips that I wish I would have had in my bag of tricks when I was planning for my Appalachian Trail through hike. If you guys wanna follow along as I train for this 100 mile challenge, I'll leave some links in the description for ways that you can follow along. Like always guys, I hope so very much that these tips have been helpful and stay tuned for more tips from the trail because if they work for me, they may work for you. Until <laughs> then. Hey, we can walk I around. Happy trails to you. Here's the latest impression. Felicia and Daryl. Happy trails. Felicia and Daryl. My hiking hiking. Stay safe. Keep it right. in right. place. <laughs> Step ahead. I'm funny. I like it. I dig it. I want more of it. Mm.